Hello, what's happening? It's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, let's start a brand new anatomy playlist by talking about the most basics of subject anatomical positions. I will also add some clinical correlations in between. With that said, now let's get started. Now, I see that many students liked my anatomy videos, especially the ones about quick reviews of the lower extremities. So, do you think I should focus more on compiling everything in one video, like I I did here? Or should I make a comprehensive playlist about every topic in anatomy? Let me know in the comment section. Let's start with the anatomical position or the erect anatomical position, but you can just drop the word erect because when we talk about the anatomical position, we're referring to this position. In this position, you are standing erect, facing me, eyes looking forwards. Your upper extremities are hanging by your sides. Your palms are facing forwards. Your thumbs are directed laterally to the outside, not to the inside. Everything here is easy except what's the anatomical position of the male penis? The anatomical position is an erect male copulatory organ, not flaccid, erect. Therefore, this is called the dorsal surface and this is called the ventral surface and here is the urethral opening. This is just a cross section. Another position is the supine position where you're lying flat horizontally on your back, face pointing upwards. Some clinical correlations. What's orthopnea? Ortho means straight. Nia means breathing. Oh, I can breathe when I'm sitting straight. Therefore, when I lie flat, I become SOB, which stands for shorts of breath because I'm a good guy, I do not curse. There are two types of orthopnea. There is cardiac orthopnea and pulmonary orthopnea. Cardiac orthopnea is caused by heart disease, such as the famous left-sided heart failure, which can cause pulmonary congestion. That's why I get orthopnea. The second one is the pulmonary orthopnea due to lung disease, such as bilateral apical lung disease. If I have a disease in both apices of my lungs, of course it's gonna make sense to sit up straight, because when I sit up, I am ventilating the bases, which are normal, better. So the patient prefers to sit up straight and hates it when he lies straight back on the bed. Listen to your patient carefully. There is a difference between doctor, doctor, I cannot sleep flat on bed because I get short of breath versus because I feel heartburn or acid reflux versus because I get dizzy and feel like the room is spinning around me. Listen carefully to your patient. Don't be a doofus who says, oh, the patient cannot lie and prefers to sit up. Therefore, it has to be left side of air. Shut up. It could be GERD. Listen carefully. Next, we have the prone position where you're lying flat horizontally on your belly facing downwards. Clinical correlation, platypnea. Nia means breathing. Platy means flat. Do you remember the platysma muscle? This can happen with severe pulmonary emphysema. In most cases, when your patient has platypnea, there is also orthodeoxia, which means when the patient sits upright, the oxygen saturation decreases. In the hospitals, in certain cases, the pulmonologist may put you or recommend that you sleep in the prone position facing downwards because it's easier on your airway. Coming up, we have the decupitus position where you're lying on your side. You could be lying on your left side or on your right side. Clinically speaking, there is a physical exam finding known as tripopnea. Literally means twisted breathing. Well, you are twisting. Oh, I have to twist in order to breathe. I prefer to sleep this way or this way because of an underlying medical condition. This could be caused by heart disease or lung disease. Let's suppose that it's lung disease. As a general rule, the patient would prefer to place the normal lung in the dependent position. So if my left lung is normal, I'll put myself in the left lateral decubitus position so that my left lung is here. 
When the doctor is trying to listen to the murmur of mitral stenosis, the doctor will ask the patient to assume the left lateral decubitus position so that I can hear your apex of your heart better. Hey medicosis, what if I was lying flat like this and suddenly stood up? What's gonna happen? Well, if you are normal, uh, nothing, because your body has mechanisms to prevent orthostatic hypotension. But if you are a very old person with poor health, standing up suddenly can make you faint and it can cause drop of your blood pressure. Why doesn't this happen in a young healthy person? Three main reasons. Number one, when you breathe, you decrease your intrathoracic pressure. Why is that? Can you inhale for me, please? <gasps> what happened to the volume of your chest? It went up. And according to Boyle's law, what should happen to the pressure in your chest? Assuming that the temperature remains constant, the pressure should decrease. It becomes negative. Translation, lower than the atmospheric pressure outside. And the negative pressure sucks in stuff. Negative pressure pulls. Positive pressure pushes negative pressure pulls. You're basically pulling the venous blood upwards from your feet back to the right side of the heart. Moreover, you have muscles in your leg that squeeze those veins and push the blood upwards. Third, your sympathetic autonomic nervous system, thanks to alpha-1 stimulation, which is a GQ coupled receptor, remember Q, calcium, vasoconstriction, of what? of arteries and veins. Many students remember alpha-1 for arteries, but they forget about the veins. This is super important. When I vasoconstrict my veins, they will decrease their radius, decrease their diameter, and push the blood upwards, increasing the venous return to your heart, particularly the right side of the heart, which will increase the preload to the right side of the heart. When I increase venous return, I'm increasing the input to the heart. And of course, more input equals more output. The volume that reaches the heart increases, and therefore the volume that leaves with each stroke increases, which means the cardiac output is going up. But when the cardiac output is going up, what's going to happen to your blood pressure? It's going to increase translation. We will prevent it from dropping, saving you from the agony of hypotension. So we just talked about the erect anatomical position, the supine position, the prone position, and the lateral decubitus positions. All of these were what? Anatomical positions. But we also have clinical positions in the hospital for physical exam or for just observing the patient. Some patients love the fetal position because they have pain. This patient probably has pancreatitis just by the fetal position. But of course, we need history. We need other physical exams. We need some lab. Well, of course, it's just a suggestion. There is the Tillendernberg position where you put the patient like this, inclining downwards with the head downwards. Why? This increases venous return and increases blood pressure or the reverse Trindelenburg position. There are other positions as well, such as the dorsal recumbent lithotomy, which is for childbirth or pelvic exam, Sims position, standing, sitting, squatting positions. Do you think I should make a video about the clinical positions? Let me know. If you like this video, you will adore my renal physiology course. It has 10 videos and my even more robust cardiac pharmacology course with 50 videos. Learn about antiarrhythmics, antihyperlipidemics, antianginal, antihypertensives, diuretics, and freaking digoxin. And for a limited time only, you can get a 30% discount towards any course on my website. Just use promo code pancreas. May your pancreas always be healthy so that I do not see you in the fetal position. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionales, where medicine makes perfect sense.